Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm James and I'm continuing on with this Balsa USA Smoothie RC Plane Kit build. So in this video, last video actually, I finished constructing the sides. And in this video what I want to do is I want to put the firewall on and then put these formers or these bulkheads and start boxing up the, the fuselage. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is deal with the firewall. So last video, I cut the, the firewall to the proper width, and I had a little bit extra length on here because I wanted to make sure I mashed it correctly after I got the plywood doubler set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on here, and I'm going to mark the location of where I need to cut it. Now, the upper part is basically perpendicular to the top of this kind of side piece but the bottom is a little bit of an angle. So when I mark this out, I want to kind of capture that angle so I can hopefully cut, cut this on an angle to sort of match that bottom, um, that bottom orientation of the fuselage at that point. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my blocks again to kind of set things perpendicular, and then I'll just mark it here, and then I'll mark it, mark it there. Okay, so I'm going to move this one piece out of the way, and we'll come back and get to that one next. Now what I did is I marked a little, I put a little F on the front, and this is going to be my designated front of the firewall so that I kind of keep things in the same, the same orientation as I build. You know, there are a little bit of variations in the pieces when you're cutting and shaping them. So if I can kind of keep it consistent, it makes it easier. You know, if I flipped it back and forth, then maybe I'd have a little bit of trouble with that. But if I keep it in the same orientation, it makes things building a little bit, little bit easier. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to use my I'm going to use my little block here, my one, two, three block, to kind of keep it nice and sturdy. Kind of hold that up there, and I'll put my firewall up against it like this. And then now I can mark the location on both sides here. And I got it right here. Oops, move it a little bit. Right there. Then I'll mark on this side also. Kind of tricky, the camera. That's there. And that's there. And then all I need to do is sort of connect these lines together. And that'll give you the angle that I need. Okay, so if you can kind of see the little angle that I drew on there. And now what I'll do is I'll put the other piece down. And because I have this thing oriented, like I said, I marked it so I now know where I am. I'm just going to flip it over this way, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'll set this up, kind of hold it in place, the right location, like that. And I'll mark this side, and then I'll mark right on that side right there, like that. And then I'll connect these two, like this. Okay, so now I have that one marked also. And now I'm just going to sort of connect the dots, so I'm going to use my square and it should be close right there see that hopefully I'll just mark that line across here like that okay and I'll do this side back here and obviously I can kind of sand it and I'm going to cut it a little bit on the rough side so I have a little bit of room to work when I get to the so I can kind of fit it fit it correctly okay all right so there's our two lines there and on the back and I'll use my razor saw I think to try to cut that angle I don't know how close I'll be able to get it but I'll try okay so the other way I just realized it would have been a lot simpler is I could have just taken the block and done something like that with it 
and then marked it this way also. And that would have achieved that angle. So I kind of made it harder than I needed to with the block, but it's sort of the, so I got that angle on there. So either way. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to see if I haven't cut this on an angle. I'll take my time. Okay, so we live and learn. This is becoming too difficult for me to try to cut it with this with my razor saw. So I'm going to go and use my coping saw and get it rough, and I'll just have to sand it to the right to the right length. And I think that'll work out a lot better than this. This is just not working out for this. Okay, well I was able to use this little hacksaw to cut the to cut this at the angle I think I need. And you know I was sometimes kind of. Uh, trying to get something on the camera to show it. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. That just wasn't working out for me. This is a lot, was a lot easier. So this should go, whoops, like this. And then what I'll do now is I'll just kind of sand it, rest the rest of it down. I may need to shave it a little bit with an X-Acto, but I'll just get it close enough and I can get it on there and go from there. But yeah, th this was a lot more useful. All right, so plywood's always a little bit more difficult to deal with than your basic balsa wood. It's a lot harder wood to deal, to cut and to shape. So I ended up, as you saw, I had to cut it with the hacksaw and then I ended up having to sand it. I used my roto tool to get it close and then I finished it off with my, my sanding block, if you will. And I did some trimming also with the, with the X-Acto blade, X-Acto knife. And now I think I got it pretty close. I think I'm just going to leave it here. I think it actually fits pretty good now, right in that location. Same thing with this one on this side. Let me flip her over. So it'd be sort of like right, like that. Oops. So it'd be sort of in there right there. And I do have some room to sort of maybe do a little bit more sanding, but I think it's really close and I think it's good enough for now. And then when I come back and assemble the, the entire fuselage, I may have to do some finishing on it, but I think that's, that's good for now. Okay, so the next step is gonna be to glue the firewall and the bulkheads onto the sides of the fuselage. Now, because this is a pretty much a box structure until you get toward the back of the fuselage, this is all pretty much gonna be, these are gonna be perpendicular to the sides of the fuselage. So I'm gonna set this one, for example, the firewall is gonna go here and I'll set that with the block like that and I'll glue that on. I'm gonna glue this on, the firewall on with a 30 minute epoxy because this is gonna receive a lot of stress associated with the engine. And then these other ones, I'll probably just use CA on them. And I'll just work my way back and get these set up at 90 degree angles to the this side of the fuselage. And then what happens is then obviously the next step is to put this side on and we'll get to that point and get to that step a little bit later. All right, so the orientation of the side of the fuselage relative to the plan doesn't make any difference. It just needs to be on a flat surface. So I'm gonna keep it on, it's a little bit of an angle so it's a little bit easier to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin it down in a few spots just so it doesn't move on me. I'll put some pins on here. middle here so I'm going to use my this is just Bob Smith Industries 30 minute epoxy to stick the firewall on and it's going to go just like this and I'm going to use my one two three blocks to keep everything straight and true and then I, what I did is I also cut some 
little pieces of parchment paper that I can put kind of at, on the block so that I don't get, obviously I don't want to, last thing I want to do is epoxy my, my block onto the wood. So I have a few pieces set aside for that. All right, so now I just need to mix some epoxy. I don't need too much of this because I don't have a big area. I'm only going to do one of these at a time, so. All right, I have lots of time to work with this because it is 30 minute epoxy. I don't want to overdo it. I probably will come back later and I may add some additional, maybe some 3 16th of an inch kind of square stock, maybe to help kind of reinforce the firewall a little bit more. Now I'm going to use one of these blocks to kind of use it as a backstop. Just like that. I'll come back and I'll get it all lined after I get these on here. Okay, so this is now just going to have to cure. It takes about 30 minutes. I'll let it dry for a while or cure up for a while before I take it off. Now, once I get to these other ones, and I could probably do them right now if I wanted to, once I get to these other bulkheads, I'm going to be just doing these with CA. And I could just kind of stick them on there pretty quickly using just a square. But I want to go ahead and let this thing set and cure up before I start messing with the rest of it. So we'll come back for the others. Okay, so I'll let this sit for a while, actually overnight, and let it cure up. And what you notice, I actually put a clamp on here on these two blocks because the blocks are sort of sliding around a little bit on my parchment paper because the parchment paper is a little, obviously, slippery and no stick. So I did put these clamps on here just to kind of hold everything in place. So let's go ahead and pop this off of here, and we'll take a look, see how it came out. All right, we'll pour it these guys off of here and okay there we go so there's our firewall and it's nicely secured with that epoxy and of course I could check it these are these are square but I can check it with my other square where, wherever it went oh here it is and yeah, trying to see it here all right looks very very good Okay, I can now move on to the to the these other bulkheads. Now the instructions call for putting the center line on each of the bulkheads, which I did. You can see I did all three of these. And the reason you do that is because I drew it on both sides. The reason you do that is because there's a center line drawn on the plan looking down on the fuselage. And later when I'm lining up the fuselage on this for some final adjustments, uh, especially when kind of bringing the tail end together, you're going to use that center line to make sure everything's sort of lined up. So I did that. And so now I can go ahead and move on to putting these on the, the side panel. I'm only going to do these two now because these are the ones that are perpendicular. Once we get down to the tail end, you have to kind of bring the tail pieces together. So it's going to have an angle in it. So this one's going to be done last. It's not going to, this one's not going to be at 90 degree angle to the, to the actual side of the, of the plane. I'll set this one aside. All right, so the instructions say to cut a hole in this bulkhead because the plan has the battery pack up here kind of below the, where the gas tank is going to be. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work out. 
So I'm going to hold off on putting this hole in here and probably just going to wait until I get it get it fit, finished. Um, I basically get the fuselage bu basically built up and then I'll probably cut what I have to. I'll come in from, from the top and, and, and do it that way. I don't know exactly where I want to put the hole yet, so I'm going to hold off on that. The other thing also is that it also calls for an 8 ounce fuel tank and this fuel tank is actually kind of long and now because I had to move the firewall back to accommodate the engine this fuel tank is not going to fit in here like that so there's going to have to be an opening in here to accommodate the fuel tank or I'm going to have to get a different size fuel tank so I have to kind of figure that stuff out later so right now I'm just going to go ahead and put the bulkhead on as is and I can come back and cut it cut it later with a I can use my my, my roto tool to kind of get in here and drill and kind of route out the, the area that I need so I'll worry about that then okay so now I shall carefully glue this bulkhead on here I'm going to get this guy out of the way let's put this right there for now and I'm going to go ahead and use this block again. I'm going to use the lighter one with the parchment paper to keep the, hopefully keep it from getting glued down. I'm just going to put this on here like this. So I'm going to use a little, another block to help kind of keep it straight, kind of hold it for me. I'm going to put a little bit of the baking soda. I don't want to overdo it just to help kind of get that bond. And then I'll come back when it's more sturdy and I'll put the thicker CA, CA on it also. This will kind of help get it sort of set. Sometimes with the hard wood, like the like hard wood or like the plywood like this, the CA doesn't react as fast as it does when you're doing the balsa. I think it's just because it doesn't soak in as, as well immediately. Okay, so I'm going to remove this block and I'm just going to give it a nice little application of the thicker CA. That. Yeah, I can pull this off. Okay. Okay, so this one's done. I'll move over to this last one. Okay, so let me try this. Put this on here like this. It's a little bit tricky with uh, trying to hold these blocks with the parchment paper, but
Okay, so I'll go ahead and let this cure up for a while and then we'll come back. And the next step will be to put this, put this piece on like this. And then once this is attached, then the whole thing comes off the plan and then we attach the, kind of bring the tail section together along that last smaller bulkhead or former. All right, so I allowed this to cure and I didn't, and I also reoriented the fuselage hopefully for a little bit better camera angle. So the next step is to go ahead and put these, put this side piece on here like this. And the way the instructions read is I'm gonna be using blocks and things to kind of keep it all nice and straight and keep it aligned. Now I'm gonna glue it like, like with the firewall here, I glued that with the 30 minute epoxy. And then when I did these two, because I was propping them, propping them up and had to kind of keep them nice and steady, I used a CA glue so that it would cure a lot quicker. But in this, this time, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my 30 minute epoxy and I'll just go ahead and put it on these other, <clears throat> these other bulkheads and just do it all with 30 minute epoxy since I'll have it out already. And I don't need to worry about sort of the speed or the time to get it to line up without it sort of like getting out of whack. So I'll just go ahead and use a 30 minute epoxy. So let me go ahead and put this out of the way for a second. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna use my, these, my one, two, three blocks to help keep everything aligned. And I'm lucky because on all act, cause these things are actually the right length. They're not too short. So I kind of lucked out with that so I can use these. And that's gonna go right here. The fuselage is gonna, the fuselage side is gonna go right here obviously. And this will kind of hold them against the, against it. I also, I'm gonna be using these, this thing. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is, I didn't know what it was either, but I saw it at the hardware store. And this is basically what's called a rafting square or a speed square. And it's used for carp like uh, carpenters, construction professionals use this to, to when they're framing, you know, things, you know, putting the joists and things to, uh, together when they're building structures. Yeah, so, and this one is made by Empire. And what's cool about it is it's square. You know, obviously it's square. It's light, it's made out of aluminum. They do make them out of plastic also. And what's really cool about it is it has, and I've mentioned these before in, in other videos, but it has measurements on the side. It has basically a, a, a ruler or a scale on this side. So it comes in really handy for a lot of things when you're building planes. And they're not too expensive, really. I forget how much these were. I don't, I don't wanna give a, remember how much it was, but it wasn't that much. So I got two of them. So I'm gonna be using these. You know, and they stand up, obviously, because they have that, this little base here. Um, yeah, so I don't know how this is used in the construction industry, but I know how I use it, so it's pretty cool. All right, so first things first, I gotta mix some epoxy. So let me do this. That one. Running out of this stuff, I'm gonna have to buy me some more. My neighbor's doing some kind of construction at his house. It sounds like the cracking over there. I don't know what's going on. So if you hear some weird noises, that's what that is. It's a little bit on the chilly side this morning. So my epoxy is a little, little thick. Put some on here. I always mix way too much. I don't know how to judge it. I need to practice that. Well, oh, there goes the cracking again. I don't, he must be doing some kind of concrete demo or something. I usually build in the evenings But today I'm building in the morning. Usually quieter at night. Now really the probably the biggest control point or the the basis that I'm gonna use is gonna be where the firewall is up against this doubler. That's gonna pretty much set the location. These these locations, you know, whatever, it may it may move a little bit here and there. 
relative, you know, if it's not perfectly lined up. But this is going to be the point that I want to have the, the, the straightest or the truest, just because that's where the engine is. If that made sense, I don't know. Okay, so let's pop it on there. It fits really nicely, so. Okay. All right, so now I will use these blocks and such to line it all up. That, I want to put it right on there because there's epoxy there, so I'll move it right off to the side a little bit, like right there. Put it right here. There we go. I'm going to use a light guy on this side. Yeah. Then, like I said, I could use this piece, this uh, this thing to kind of, you kind of see here, this is up against the bottom one. I just slid this over. Looks like it's all working out. Okay. And then kind of check in in a few spots. It's good there. All right, what I'm gonna do now is because this thing is sort of you know, it's got a little bit of weight to it, especially in this rear portion here. I don't want it to kind of sag. I want to keep it nice and straight, or flat, I should say. So I'm going to put a couple, <clears throat> not too heavy. I want to just put some weight, weight on it to kind of keep it down. And let's see what else. Can I see how that lifts up on there? I don't need to worry about the back portion. Okay. All right, so I'll spend some time just making sure I'll make sure everything's lined up. I'll look at it a couple times before I let it sit. Spend, just to make sure things are true. I mean the kit's the kit is a good kit, so yeah, see things look really nice. Maybe hard to pick up on the camera, but it's nice and straight. And the reason this works like this is because these bulkheads are 90 degrees to the fuselage sides. If this was a different type of build where it was completely there was tapering or there was a you know a rounded fuselage, this type of thing wouldn't work. It'd be a different process. The other way to do this would be to flip the whole fuselage like this and have this flat side down on the on the building board and then do it that way also. But I'm just going to follow what the instructions say. Well, since I have a little bit extra of the epoxy, I'll, I'll just go ahead and apply it to these lower ones, add a little bit more. Might as well use it up. Now, I've, I've had comments about putting too much kind of little bit extras, little extras on my builds in terms of adding weight to the plane. And I understand that. But um, I've never had a plane come in above, above its design weight because I've added, you know, extra glue or extra little braces and things like that. I've always, I've never overbuilt a plane. The only plane that I actually did do that to if I'm if so I did do one I guess was the the chipmunk model that I built the balsa I mean that was the house of balsa chipmunk build that one came in a little heavier because I did add a lot to it that was a two channel that was a two channel plane with a smaller engine and I put a bigger engine and I put four channels in it so I did add weight but even then I was only over 
I think I was only over like about two ounces or something. So I think if you're careful, you can, you can do little extras here and there to help strengthen up the airframe. And it won't hurt you. But it will help you if the plane's a little stronger. Yeah, and that, and that uh, Balsa USA, no, it was a House of Balsa chipmunk, which I did after I, I copied this, this scheme over here. So that one was my first kind of sort of video series. It wasn't really a video series, it was basically pictures and narration. It was the first thing I did here on, on my channel. You can judge whether it was good or not. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking it wasn't very good. But that was a fun build because I had that kit for a long time and I decided to build it and I knew I was going to make these modifications to it and it turned out pretty good. It flies, flies awesome. Right, so go ahead and take, let's take a look at this and see. You can kind of see the front end here. That's pretty, pretty right on. Of course, here's the, there's a little gap right in there, but that, that's because the plywood doubler I sanded, there's a little bit of a curve in the sanding of the, of the doubler. It's not really the, it's not that the firewall is not in the right location. Of course, here's this one. Oops, here's this one here. This one's a little bit, I'll have to trim this. I mean, I don't really have to trim it. But um, both of these I were a little bit too long, so I had to trim them back to kind of meet the meet the bulkhead there. Let's go over here, and here's the back end, and you can see it's really close. Yeah, so these are really these are really cool. I'm looking down on it, both sides. I let this sit now for several hours, did some other things around the house, and now I'm coming back to it to go ahead and see how it came out. So we'll take our makeshift weights off of here, and we'll see how we did. Now usually what I do is, for these epoxies, you know, they cure up. The five minute epoxy cures, you know, supposed to be in five minutes, the 30 minute cures in 30 minutes. but um, what I like to do is just wait, and if the epoxy still has sort of a tack to it or a sticky feeling, even if it's even though I can feel that it's sort of hard and it's and it's cured up, if it has that kind of stickiness to it still, I'll I'll let it continue to, to cure before I mess with it. So like right now, this is nice and it's it's hard and it's not sticky at all. So I think I'm, I'm confident that it's nice nicely cured. All right, let's pull these guys off of here. Get rid of our squares. One thing I worry about with these weights or these one, two, three blocks is that I'm going to be moving them, you know, and then I actually drop it and it shatters whatever I'm working on. Okay, there we go. Get this stuff out of the way. Let's pour pins out of here. Our very handy T-pins. And I will say there is a little bit of, I found that a lot of the wood in this kit, it's for the most part, it's okay. But I have found several instances where there's a little bit of a bow or a little bit of a curve in some of it. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. All right. So that's looking pretty nice. Okay, so the next major step will be to, let me flip this around here. Let's just take a look at it from a couple different spots. Um, the next step will be to bring the tail kind of like this half, the rear half portion of the, of the fuselage together. So obviously the tail is gonna come together like this. 
and there's going to be some cross braces that go in here. This this last sort of remaining former or bulkhead is going to go inside here like this. And then also a piece of stock goes like right back in here, kind of like like in here. So what I'm going to do, and then of course the turtle deck is going to go on, and then we'll move on to the next steps, which is going to start putting the blocks on and everything else. But I think I'm going to call it good right now for this video, and that'll that'll yeah that'll be about it. So next time we'll come back and we'll continue on with the fuselage. So thanks for watching my channel, I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.